In this video, I'm going to do a quick review of the Lincoln Electric MIG flux welder. Basically, this particular unit will do both MIG welding and flux core welding. I bought this particular item because it is not made in China. I don't know what Poland really means as far as durability, but from the reviews I have read, you can buy this welder from Harbor Freight. It's called Chicago Electric or something like that, and they cost you $90, $100. But um, basically what's happening on them is the Chinese feed system wears out on you. So in my opinion, if something costs 100 bucks and it only lasts a year, you're getting ripped off. So I went ahead and um, this particular unit costs about $300. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to post some footage of the welds that it produces and talk about it a little bit after I've used it. I haven't even had a chance to use it. This is a 120 volt unit that can plug right into the wall. I don't have 240 out here, so I had to settle for this. And basically from what I've read online, I've done a lot of research on these things. And what you have to choose from as far as durability is considered is Miller and Lincoln Electric. And it pretty much goes both ways. I kind of liked the control mechanism on the Lincoln Electric a little bit better. I'm not sure if this is better than the Miller, but I know people who say they have had theirs for 10 years and they've had no problems. So I'm gonna give this one a shot. I'm gonna show you some of the beads that it runs. I don't have a setup to show you me using this thing and I think that'd kind of be worthless anyway. So I'm just gonna show you the beads I'm able to produce. I'm getting ready to weld this thing here together. I'm making a, a heating element for a wood burner. You'll see when it's done what I mean by that, but Anyway, so far I'm kind of liking it. We're gonna see how this goes. Anyone who's considered buying one of these, I will try and provide a little bit of information that I have reaped from my many, many hours of research into this subject. Because as I said, these days I don't buy anything without reading at least 20 to 25 reviews on that product. And Chicago Electric has pretty much sealed its fate. They've decided that um, you only need a wire feed system that lasts a year. And because of that, I will never be purchasing any of their welding products. I do have, this might be a Chicago electric welder here. I believe it is. This is a Chicago electric inverter welder that I've had for a couple of years. Now, it's basically an inverter welder and the welds are of extremely low quality. If you're gonna be welding pipes that can't leak and stuff like that, then, uh, yeah, it's, it's really hard to use without burning through the pipe. That's some stainless steel welding that I did. And it just produces a really porous, crappy weld. Bear in mind, welding is an art. If you can't write like a calligraphist, and if you don't have beautiful handwriting, I've pretty much determined that that's one way of discerning whether or not you're gonna be a good welder because it's kind of like handwriting. And I have very sloppy handwriting. I'm not such a good welder. So hopefully I don't do this device any injustice with my poor welding skills. One thing to remind you of, uh, be careful when you untape these coils because they explode. I've got a rat's nest here and hopefully that doesn't cause a wire clog. I untaped it and it just blew up on me. So be looking out for that when you unwrap this. Okay, one thing I want to point out about running welding machines that uh, may not have caught the attention of some people is that first of all, running one on an extension cord, even though it is within the gauge limit specified by the manufacturer, you are gonna have a voltage drop and that voltage drop will affect the efficiency of your weld. In addition to that, if you're running any other high wattage equipment in your garage, for instance, initially I was running this thousand watt light there's 500 watts per light there you will experience up to a five to six volt drop in the power in your garage i have tested this theory extensively with um, my hydrogen torch 
I found that when I'm running lights and stuff that my voltage will go from 125 volts in this garage down to 119 sometimes just because you have other stuff turned on. Now I could illustrate that by running a blower and showing you how turning this on will reduce the speed to a blower but I'm really not too worried about that. You just need to take my word for it that I went ahead and shut this light off and sure enough my welds started acting a little bit better. I haven't cleaned this up yet but it welded so much better with that light off versus having it on. So bear that in mind if you're running other high wattage equipment at the same time you're running the welder it is going to affect the settings of the welder. So you may try and adopt a certain favorite setting for a certain gauge and then find that it isn't acting appropriately at times and that could be very well that you just have too much other stuff on in the garage so just a quick note to consider that that you will experience a voltage drop both on extension cords and on the light enough so that you will notice it in your welds okay so far I'm liking what I see here. This thing welds a lot easier than my inverter stick welder. I'm still not doing so good on my beads. But from the way I've seen the metal flow, I would say this is going to be watertight. Even though it's not water. One thing I like about the flux core welder is the amount of slag is so much less than what you would see on a stick welder. I need to get me a, a nibbler, or whatever they call that, to get this slag off. I want to say that my weld's still a little cold here. I need to add a little more power, maybe. I don't know. A little cold yet, but definitely an improvement as far as my welding's concerned. I mean, I'm a horrible welder. I'll be the first to admit it. So don't bother letting me know. I mean, that's obvious here. There's a couple cold spots right there where I didn't get the metal to flow. But I did observe the flow in the inside corner of the metal. That's kind of what I'm going for right there. Something that looks like that all the way around. There's a little divot there, but definitely an improvement far better than uh what i've experienced off this thing i don't recommend buying one of these if you're ever thinking you're gonna save some money i don't know that i'd bother i mean nothing i have welded with this thing has pleased me it's just something about the inverter arc that isn't as good as the diode arc this is a diode or a rectified transformer so it's putting off a much hotter arc and a much better flow. I can get a puddle of metal with this thing. This thing here will not give me a puddle of metal. It's just kind of a blob coming off the stick. It's not like any stick welder I've used in class or anything. So basically from what I have learned in the past, anytime you see spatter like that, they say you're too hot. If anyone has any input on that, I would be willing to listen. These welds aren't going to pass any tests, but they will definitely function for what I need them for. So, so far, so good. I'm loving this thing. I mean, this is an unbiased opinion when I say that. I love the way this thing welds. Having this stick, you know, being so close in your hand, rather than having a huge welding rod. The arc is far more sustainable than with the stick welder. So, I'm digging it. Definitely recommend this device so far. So there's a little bit better of a bead. Still a total flunky, but I think it sealed the part up. I might want to hit that spot there again, maybe. I kind of turned it down, so I'm a little bit too cold on that, I think. Maybe moving a little too fast. But at either rate, I'm definitely loving this flux core. It's so much better than stick welding. There's far less slag to deal with. And I think I could get good at this with enough practice. I've only got about five hours of welding in my whole life total, so I've got a lot to learn. 
So this is what that unit is powering. What I have here is the exhaust port going into a cyclone heat exchange. Those exhaust units basically heat this canister up as well as that tank there. But that's just to kind of salvage some of the waste heat from my flue. I was worried about how much heat is flying outside just going to waste. So what this thing here does is salvage with some of that heat. You see here I'm running at about 365 degrees. It'll get up to 700 degrees when I run it on high. That's a fairly small fire. But that's quite a bit of surface area. Um, some of these parts get screaming hot. I just fired this up. As soon as it gets some red coals in there, this thing really gets hot and it really cranks some heat out. It's in the upper 30s outside right now. And I just fired this thing up. It's already got me up to 45 degrees in here. I've been running for about five minutes. I'm just running this fan here on it. And uh, this pipe here is also acting as kind of like a floor radiator. I'm going to go all the way over here and out the exit. But yeah, man, it's working pretty good. And the reason why I'm, I'm running the flue blower, another reason is I don't have to worry about leaks on this system because it's a negative air pressure combustion system. Any leaks just allow air into the system. They don't let smoke out. I do need to finish getting the rest of this zinc off here. Same thing on that pipe there. It starts to smell a little funny in here after a while. I haven't got zinc headache yet though, or metal sickness, but definitely something I'm concerned about. Think about taking some acid and just burning that off. But there you have it. The blower is up and running again, cleaned up. Hopefully it'll last me another two years.